Good evening, everybody, and welcome to this our traditional annual reading of Nine Lessons and Carols. It's a foretaste of what's to come, isn't it? It's the start of our Christmas excitement. And I know we've had other Christmas services during the last week or so, and we'll have more during this week. But it's always a bit special, isn't it, when we come here for this service? So thank you for braving the frost and the, the horrible wet weather to be here tonight. It really is a delight to see you all. I'm supposed to give notices about other services, but do you know what? We're having a cup of tea and coffee afterwards, and we're having mince pies, and I think it's probably the best time to tell you then, rather than now, when we're just beginning to start just coming into our worship. So you've got orders of service. There'll be prompts on the, on the PowerPoint as well. The service will flow. There won't be an interruption. Um, I'm going to go and sit down alongside you all. But let's just open with a word of prayer. Dear Lord, we thank you that we're able to come here tonight to worship you. We thank everybody for their time and effort that they've put into rehearsals to make this a lovely evening. Draw close to us now as we draw close to you. Amen. So please stand for our first carol, Once in Royal David City. First reading is taken from Genesis chapter 3, verses 8 to 16. The temptation and fall of man. And they heard the sound of the Lord God 
walking in the garden in the cool of the day. And Adam and his wife hid themselves from the presence of the Lord God among the trees of the garden. Then the Lord God called to Adam and said to him, Where are you? So he said, I heard your voice in the garden, and I was afraid, because I was naked, and I hid myself. And he said, Who told you that you were naked? Have you eaten from the tree of which I commanded you that you should not eat? Then the man said, The woman whom you gave to be with me, she gave me of the tree, and I ate. And the Lord God said to the woman, What is this you have done? And the woman said, The serpent deceived me, and I ate. So the Lord God said to the serpent, Because you have done this, you are cursed more than all cattle, and more than every beast of the field. On your belly you shall go, and you shall eat dust all the days of your life. And I will put enmity between you and the woman, and between your seed and her seed. He shall bruise your head, and you shall bruise his heel. And to the woman he said, I will greatly multiply your sorrow and your conception. In pain you shall bring forth children. Your desire shall be for your husband, and he shall rule over you. This is the word of the Lord. Thanks be to God.
Genesis chapter 22, verses 15 to 16. God's promise to Abraham. Then the angel of the Lord called to Abraham a second time out of heaven and said, By myself I have sworn, says the Lord, because you have done this thing and have not without your son, your only son. Blessing I will bless on you, and multiply I will so multiply your descendants as the stars of the heaven, and as the sand which is on the seashore. And your descendants shall possess the gate of thine enemy. In your seed all the nations of the earth shall be blessed, because you have obeyed my voice. This is the word of the Lord.
Isaiah foretells the Christ's birth and the coming kingdom. The people walking in darkness have seen a great light. On those living in the land of deep darkness, a light has dawned. For to us a child is born, to us a son is given, and the government will be on his shoulders, and he will be called Wonderful Counselor, Mighty God, Everlasting Father, Prince of Peace. Of the greatness of his government and peace, there will be no end. He will reign on David's throne and over his kingdom, establishing and upholding it with justice and righteousness from that time on and forever. The zeal of the Lord Almighty will accomplish this. This is the word of the Lord.
The fifth reading is taken from Luke, chapter 1, verses 26 to 33. Christ's birth is announced to Mary. Now in the sixth month, the angel Gabriel was sent by God to a city of Galilee named Nazareth, to a virgin betrothed to a man whose name was Joseph, of the house of David. The virgin's name was Mary. And having come in, the angel said to her, Rejoice, highly favoured one. The Lord is with you. Blessed are you among women. But when she saw him, she was troubled at his saying and considered what manner of greetings this was. Then the angel said to her, Do not be afraid, Mary, for you have favor, found favour with God. And behold, you will conceive in your womb and bring forth a son, and shall call him Jesus. He will be great and will be called the Son of the Highest. The Lord God will give him the throne of his father David, and he will reign over the house of Jacob forever and his kingdom there will no, be no end. Then Mary said to the angel, how can this be, since I do not know a man? And the angel answered and said to her, the Holy Spirit will come upon you, and the power of the highest will overshadow you. Therefore, also the Holy One, who is to be born, will be called the Son of God. This is the word of the Lord. The sixth reading is taken from Luke chapter 2, verses 1 to 7, Christ born of Mary. And it came to pass in those days that a decree went out from Caesar Augustus that all the world should be registered. This census first took place while Quirinius was governing Syria. So all went to be registered, everyone to his own city. 
Joseph also went up from Galilee out of the city of Nazareth into Judea to the city of David, which is called Bethlehem, because he was of the house and lineage of David, to be registered with Mary, his betrothed wife, who was with child. So it was that while they were there, the, the days were completed for her to be delivered. And she brought forth her firstborn son and wrapped him in swaddling cloths and laid him in a manger because there was no room for them in the inn. This is the word of the Lord. Peace. 
Luke tells of the visit of the angels to the shepherds. And there were shepherds living out in the fields nearby, keeping watch over their flocks at night. An angel of the Lord appeared to them, and the glory of the Lord shone around them, and they were terrified. But the angel said to them, Do not be afraid. I bring you good news that will cause great joy for all the people. Today, in the town of David, a Saviour has been born to you. He is the Messiah, the Lord. This will be a sign to you. You will find a baby wrapped in cloths, and lying in a manger. Suddenly, a great company of heavenly hosts appeared with the angel, praising God and saying, Glory to God in the highest, and on earth peace to those on whom his favour rests. When the angels had left them and gone into heaven, the shepherds said to one another, Let's go to Bethlehem and see this thing that has happened which the Lord has told us about. So they hurried off and found Mary and Joseph and the baby who was lying in the manger. When they had seen him, they spread the word concerning what had been told to them about this child, and all who heard it were amazed at what the shepherds said to them. But Mary treasured up all these things and pondered them in her heart. The shepherds returned, glorifying and praising God for all the things they had heard and seen, which were just as they had been told. This is the word of the Lord. Thanks be to God.
The eighth reading is taken from Matthew chapter 2, beginning to read at verse 1. Wise men from the east. Now, after Jesus was born in Bethlehem of Judea, in the days of Herod the king, behold, wise men from the east came to Jerusalem, saying, Where is he who has been born king of the Jews? For we have seen his star in the east and have come to worship him. When Herod the king heard this, he was troubled, and all Jerusalem with him. And when he had gathered all the chief priests and scribes of the people together, he inquired of them where the Christ was to be born. So they said to him, In Bethlehem of Judea, for thus it is written by the prophet. But you, Bethlehem, in the land of Judah, are not the least among the rulers of Judah. For out of you shall come a ruler who will shepherd my people Israel. Then Herod, when he had secretly called the wise men, determined from them what time the star appeared. And he sent them to Bethlehem and said, Go and search carefully for the young child, and when you have found him, bring back word to me, that I may come and worship him also. When they heard the king, they departed, and behold, the star which they had seen in the east went before them, till it came and stood over where the young child was. When they saw the star, they rejoiced with exceedingly great joy. And when they had come into the house, they saw the young child with Mary, his mother, and fell down and worshipped him. And when they had opened their treasures, they presented to him gold, frankincense, and myrrh. Then, being divinely warned in a dream that they should not return to Herod, they departed for their own country another way. This is the word of the Lord.
The ninth reading is taken from John chapter 1, verses 1 to 14, the eternal word. In the beginning was the word, and the word was with God, and the word was God. He was in the beginning with God. All things were made through him, and without him nothing was that was made. In him was life, and the life was the light of men. And the light shines in the darkness, and the darkness did not comprehend it. There was a man sent from God whose name was John. This man came for a witness, to bear witness of the light, that all through him might believe. He was not that light, but was sent to bear witness of that light. That was the true light which gives light to every man coming into the world. He was in the world, and the world was made through him, and the world did not know him. He came to his own, and his own did not receive him. But as many as received him, to them he gave them the right to become children of God, to those who believed in his name, who were born not of blood, nor of the will of the flesh, nor of the will of man, but of God. And the word became flesh and dwelt among us, and we beheld his glory. The glory is the one and only begotten of the Father, full of grace and truth. This is the word of the Lord. I you probably all recognise this, except you know it's a bulb, but it's a new one. It's an experimental one that's just been brought out by the government. It doesn't work on electricity. It works on human energy. So if you grasp the bulb like this, it will light up. <laughs> Well, it won't at my age. I'm expiring, so I haven't got much energy. So, um, There looks like somebody's got full of energy. Would you like to just come and hold this for a second? I'll come over here then. Sorry. Just hold it. Oh, okay. Thank you. Anyway, uh, we'll do another. So <laughs> I think it's all right. We're going to do this. What I'm going to need is everyone to just give me a hand, literally. Because I think if I get you all to raise your hands in the air, I will draw on your energy, and that includes the choir, soak them into my hand as I manoeuvre the bulb, and I bet we can make it light. Now, I can feel the tension rising at this moment because you're all going to raise your hands in church, aren't you? You go, oh, this is going to be embarrassing. Don't worry. There's no one watching. Right, so after three, I want you to lift your hands in the air. And if you don't, it won't work. So no, no pressure then. But okay. One, two, three. Hands in the air. Quick, 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 quick. Hands up in the air. What about that? Hands down, hands down, it's alright. Or oh, perhaps you should keep them up for the ten minutes. I'm going to talk. No, no, no. Be awesome. But one thing we've learned, haven't we not? Many hands make light work. <laughs> it does get better, just keep with me, just keep with me, just keep with me. <laughs> but there is a thing about us in the Western world, is that I think we've come so complacent with the value and the purpose of light. We just take it for granted. Literally, we can just switch it on and take it for granted. It's there. Now, we might be worried about paying our lecky bills, but we still take it for granted. And it's only when we're in fear of losing it, or we live in a place or move to a place where there is no light, you appreciate what it does. A few years ago, I went to Uganda with my daughter, and we went to the right to the north of Uganda, a place called Onangora. We stayed in the village, no water, no gas, no electricity. And when we arrived on the first night, late at night, I stood outside, and I was just stunned because I stood with my daughter under a canopy of blazing light of the stars which shone down. I've never seen anything like that and never seen it again. But it was just stunning, it was breathtaking. And then later I went for a shower, literally someone pouring hot water over me from a bucket. But as I stood there, fireflies flew around me. Not just one colour, but red, green, Blue, all circling around. I was just stunned in awe. 
And of course it is that, that we realise that light reveals beauty, creation, wonder. But then a few days later, we were hiking and we'd gone across miles and miles of territory visiting other villages. And when we got back, it was dark again. And so literally, we just had to turn in. That's what was life is like. So I went into my hut and I, I was trying to take my boots off and I was holding my hand against a pillar post which held the, the roof of my hut up. And as I, I stood there trying to get, I put a little torch on the table, lit my hand up just vaguely, and then I felt a tickling sensation across my hand. And as I looked, a spider was crawling across my hand. And it was as big as my back of my hand. And as it crawled past me, believe me or not, it looked up to me and it went, and it winked. <laughs> and it said, I hope you sleep tonight. <laughs> well, guess what? I didn't. You see, reveal, light reveals goodness, wonder, creation. But light can shine the darkness and reveal those things we fear and would rather not face. And so as you can guess, this is the part where I introduce the light of the world. As we read or heard from our reading, Jesus is the light of the world. And he comes into our world to reveal so much which is good, so much which we need to face. And he said of himself, I am the light of the world. Those who follow me will never walk in darkness, but will live a life of light. Will live a life of light. Isn't that intriguing? Invitational to wonder what does that really mean? And it is, of course, that was Jesus' purpose, to come into our world to reveal so many things which are important for us. For eternity, for living life, for our relationships and our relationship with God. Jesus said, if you've seen me, you've seen the Father. Jesus revealing to us that when we see and know Jesus, we know what God is like and who God is. And it also said, I have not sinned in this life. And it is that he reveals to us what it is to live a perfect, full, human life. He was without sin, the scripture tells us. And when we see the life he lives, then we understand why he was the one perfect sacrifice who could take our place and win for us what we could not do for ourselves, namely the gift of eternal life. So Jesus is the light of the world. He reveals to us who God is, what the Father is like, and reveals to us what living a full human life can look like. I don't know if you know this, it's not well known. But after God cre created day, he went on to create night. And it cost him so much energy to do that. One of the angels said, God, what are you going to do now? He said, I think I'll just call it a day. <laughs> and you see, that's what Jesus does. He comes into our world to reveal which is good, and he comes into our world to help us see what is dark and what we might fear and not want, or want to embrace. And it is for me that Jesus helps us to see who we are and what we could be. Some years ago, in fact, in 1987, I met a man called Trevor over in St. Helens. He'd just become a Christian, literally in that, that week. He was a, a lad who'd been finished in the mines. He'd, he'd worked all his life. He'd been made redundant through, through uh, injury. And he was really down. And when I talked to him and asked him about his job, he said, oh, I'm nothing really. I said, you are something. You are made in the image of God. Never forget that. 20 years later, I heard him and saw him at Liverpool Cathedral telling his story how he'd come to faith, how he'd come to faith thinking he was nothing, and then went on to say, but now I know I'm made in the image of God. 
And it was Jesus for me who had helped him to understand, to reveal to him that he was precious. He was unique. He was the creation of God and that's who he was. But Jesus also reveals the darkness in our lives as well. In fact, St. Paul, one of the great writers of the New, St New Testament said, in him he reveals the darkness and the motives of our heart. And those are the stuff we'd rather not face. And yet, in the darkness of our lives is where there is gold to be mined. And if we allow Jesus to be born in us as he's born in our world, then he will reveal not only what, what is good in our lives, he will also show to us where there is darkness and where there is the potential for light and glory to shine and to help our lives to be transformed. So tonight, we celebrate the one who said, I am the light of the world. Those who follow me will never walk in darkness, but will live in the light of life. That's the gift that God offers to us. There'll be many gifts that we will receive over Christmas, or I hope there will be many gifts. But I hope we will not neglect or turn away from the greatest gift the world has ever known. The gift given by God the Father of his Son, Jesus Christ. And when we receive him into our lives, he will literally take us to places where we never imagined we could go. Let's pray. Heavenly Father, we thank you this night for the light you sent into our world, our Lord Jesus Christ. We pray, Father, you might help us to receive him and to allow him to reside within our lives for eternity. We ask this in Jesus' name. Amen.
please do sit for the final blessing. And first of all, a very big thank you to everybody who's led us in our worship today. And that includes all of us because we've all shared in the beautiful message of Christmas. And I hope that you're able to join us for a few other celebrations over the next week. As Mary waited for the birth of your son, so we wait for his coming in glory. Bring us through the birth pangs of this present day to see with her our great salvation in Jesus Christ, our Lord. Amen. Amen. May the babe of Bethlehem be ours to tend. May the child of Nazareth be our friend. May the man of Galilee his strength to you lend. And may the Christ of Calvary be with us to the end. Go in peace to love and to serve the Lord. In the, in the name, name of Christ. Christ. Amen. Amen. There are refreshments at the back, should you be able to stay. If not, have a wonderful Christmas and we look forward to seeing you during the next week as we come even closer to that special day when we remember the birth of Christ. Mm -hmm.